In this video, we're going to take a look at the Jinhao 159. Let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. I really like this pen, especially as a starter pen. It does let you get the experience of a larger pen, and it is a bit weighty, but that's not too, really a problem for me. Another great thing about this pen is how easy the nib is to change out, which is the reason that this was one of the pens that I used for a couple of years for doing writing samples. I feel that it's just so reachable for anybody just wanting to try a new or a fountain pen for the first time. Being so affordable is one of the strongest things about this pen. And with that, I don't mind using it. It's not like I avoid using this pen. I just have other pens I tend to use more. With that, now that I'm not just using it strictly for writing samples, I can see myself putting this in my rotation periodically to go ahead and use it just for some fun. I think this is a very good starter pen. And the Jinhao pens that are out there, or at least the three that I use, I think are really good to go with. I know people want to say that it's trying to pass off or copy other pens, but I see it as really just a cigar-shaped pen that's a little bit larger in size. Now that we know how I feel about the Jinhao 159, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Jinhao 159 came wrapped in bubble wrap in a mailer. As inexpensive as the pen is, you shouldn't really expect much in way of packaging, and there isn't. Just being in a bubble wrap and stuck in a mailer is perfectly good. It really keeps the cost down, which I can appreciate for this pen. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. Now, as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap a pen, I generally don't care. So, how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Jinhao 159 takes one turn to uncap, just under one turn. One turn to uncap, amazing. Truly amazing. I don't have issues with this pen drying out, so they are doing a great job with that. And one turn, a lot more expensive pens take more than one turn to uncap. This is doing great and really good for that student note taker. This gets us to the nib. This pen has a steel Goulet Pens 1.1 stub on it. Now you're seeing it here with the stub nib that I use, not the nib that comes with this pen. I don't think the nibs that come with this pen are bad. I just think that one of the biggest strengths this pen has is its ability to swap out nibs at a fairly inexpensive price. The nib in this pen only cost about $15 more than the pen. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Jinhao 159 uses standard international cartridges or converters and holds approximately 0.7 milliliters of ink. The ink today is Roher & Klinger's Farmum Book. I've stated before that I don't care for standard international converters, especially generic ones. And the converter in this pen, I've had to replace a couple of them over the years, but I've used it an awful lot.
As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some pens need to be posted to be used comfortably, and some people prefer to post their pens. This pen, I guess you could technically post it if you wanted to. Very back heavy, really not worth that. It becomes uncomfortable for me. Now, it's long enough to not be any kind of a problem, and it's certainly girth, girthy enough and heavy enough to write very comfortably with unposted. But if you had to, you can post it, and it will stay without any kind of a problem. Now, the important part, the writing sample. I know that I can talk about the writing experiences, how it feels on the page, but that may be a little unfair only because it's not the nib the pen came with. So instead, thinking about the size and weight of the pen in my hand, it's heavy enough that you really do know it's there. And early on in fountain pens, we tend to associate the weight with a higher quality pen, which is going to be a very good thing with this. It is a heavier pen. You don't have to hold on to it heavy, and you really get to learn not to press down in order to write. A pen like this, starting out, lets you get used to the fact that it doesn't take any pressure to write with a fountain pen. And it's added girth that it has being a larger pen, certainly in the oversized range, lets you not get any kind of hand cramping during pages and pages of writing. I have easily, and more than once, written this pen completely out of ink in a single sitting. So it's comfortable. It's an enjoyable pen to hold on to in the hand. And while the section is metal, I don't find it to be uh, slippery at all. In fact, I think the fact that they have it finished helps hold on, give it a little hold than if it was an unfinished and shinier section. My fingers tend to sit on the threads, which the lip has a spot that feels a little bit sharp, but it doesn't bother me. So again, I really like the writing experience with this pen, and it's one of the pens that I can definitely say I'm very happy that I've used because it has really helped me make judgments about what pens I would like, especially if they cost a little bit more. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Now here it is with a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. Being that there's a stub nib in here, naturally it's going to be very wide, much wider than your standard nibs, but it does add some nice flair to your writing. But how does this pen compare to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, here it is next to a Sailor 1911 standard with a music nib. A Tasha Spectrum with a music nib. A Pilot Custom 912 with a music nib. A Sailor 1911 Large with a zoom nib and a Platinum 3776 with a music nib.
So it isn't a review without some size comparisons. Here it is capped. Here it is uncapped. And here it is posted. After having seen the size comparisons, you can tell that this is a larger pen, more into what you would consider that oversized, like I've said before. So if you're not sure if a larger pen is really for you, I think for as inexpensive as this pen is, it's a great way to test the waters. At this point, we have a dirty pen that we need to go ahead and clean. Be sure to check out the next pen review video where we take a look at the Jinhao X450. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.